Welcome to Creator's Corner, a Charlevoix Circle of Arts YouTube series where we highlight a new Michigan-based artist every second Monday of the month. Hello, I am Ebony Amber and welcome to Creator's Corner here at Charlevoix Circle of Arts Gallery. Today, our very special guest is Nancy Moss. Welcome. We're so happy to have you today. Good to be here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, great. And Nancy is a watercolorist known for her collage watercolor weaving, and she has shown many of those works right here at the Circle, participating in summer salons as well as the popular paint out events. And she has also volunteered for the gallery, and we thank you very much for that. That's awesome. Mm, they deserve it. Yeah. They really do. <laughs> and how long have you been doing that? How long have you been able well, to volunteer? The current um, management is only a few years old, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sarah and her team are really so gratifying to have as leaders. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been many others before them, and I have been coming in the summers regularly to Charlevoix for many, many years because my husband is from Michigan, and while we live lived at that most of the time in New York State, we would come here with our family. Mm -hmm. And so I engaged in many, many shows here mm -hmm. over the years. Awesome. I can't really put a label on it. It might be 15, 20 years yeah. for, if I really counted them up. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And have you always been creative or is that something that evolved with you over time? I think I'm, I'm, I'm a creative, yeah. like some other people in this room. Yeah. <laughs> I've always been a creative. I did. I wouldn't say take a short uh, kind of a detour, but I was fascinated by history and by uh, non-Western cultures. Mm -hmm. So I have, I did uh, along the way um, gain a PhD and I taught African art for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was wonderful because it just opened my eyes to a whole world that I wouldn't have known about and to the artists and craftspeople within it. Mm -hmm. um, but it took me away, of course, all those years teaching from making stuff myself. Mm -hmm. Because like you, I, ha I had a family, I had boys, mm -hmm. wonderful boys, and I wanted to spend <laughs> a little time with them. So I would say it's since retirement, mm -hmm. and that's been about over 12 years now, that's that I've had uh, complete leisure Mm -hmm. to be an artist. And was it during that time that you developed the watercolor weaving that you're so well known for? Yeah, well actually that I fell into. Okay. And maybe women and mothers would get a kick out of this. There was a semester I wasn't teaching. I took a semester off when my children were very young and they were somehow or other napping, which didn't happen very often. They were little mm -hmm. and I was out in upstate New York in our backyard and we lived in a very rural area and I was just excited by spring and so I took my watercolors during their nap time out and started to paint the wildflowers and the ferns mm -hmm. that grew in the forest right adjacent to our house mm -hmm. and uh, to make a long story short I didn't really like what I was producing, it seemed very conventional because I'm looking at these plants mm -hmm. that are so alive mm -hmm. and ferns, you know, coming out just about to burst out. I thought, mm -hmm. well, where's the energy, Nancy? So with that, I thought, well, I like that part of the painting. I'm not sure about this. And I started to cut. Mm -hmm. And that's how I fell into the idea of piecing things together. Mm -hmm. And once they were pieced, because they were three dimensional, Mm -hmm. They became much more animated mm -hmm. and they looked, or let's say they didn't look, but they, I thought, gave off the energy mm -hmm. that I saw in those spring plants. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning. Yeah, you have a piece at the circle right now. It has like a waterfall um, within it and it almost looks like it's moving. It almost has that energy as you're describing. Well, thank you, because yeah. that's sort of what happens when you do that. If you do it with the cutting and 
the cutting's very intuitive. I don't plan. Mm. I just kind of go at it and see what happens. And I make plenty of mistakes, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, and maybe you can take those pieces and use them elsewhere. Use something else. Yeah, absolutely. Some of my favorite paintings of yours, though they are all wonderful, are the African landscapes and collages. What can you tell us about those? Oh, yes. And I, of course, they haven't been shown up here in Michigan. Um, they were kind of a late effort to encapsulate or summarize my entire career-long um, association with West Africa. Mm. And um, a colleague of mine, when I was teaching, said to me, because she knew I did art, even mm -hmm. though I didn't have much time as a, as a professor, mm -hmm. she said, do I did some? And she said, well, where are your African ones? And I said, you know what? they're still in my left brain mm. and I haven't downloaded them into art. So she challenged me. Mm. And um, as a result, I started to play around with some of the ideas that kind of underlie traditional African art mm -hmm. about the fact that the ancestors don't die, they live and they live in the forests and they can affect your life and they can there are other forces that are very positive, but also ones to be scared of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Strange beings that pop up here and there. Mm -hmm. And I started to visualize them and to paint. Mm. So I did a series of paintings kind of based on my imaginative idea of what I used to teach mm -hmm. about how uh, traditional African culture approached let's say, the visual world. Mm -hmm. And what was it that inspired you about that culture particularly? Because there's so many to choose from. You're right. Um, well, I, I lived principally in Nigeria, in West Africa. Wow. So uh, I, there are extraordinary art cultures going way back thousands of years in that country. Mm -hmm. They're elsewhere in Africa too, mm -hmm. but Nigeria is particularly rich and there are many forms. There's um, metalworking that is really globally known these days, mm -hmm. going back, as I say, over a thousand years, mm -hmm. beautiful lost wax cast bronzes. Mm -hmm. And I actually spent some time with smiths as a result, blacksmiths mm -hmm. and metalsmiths. Mm -hmm. who seem to be kind of the recipients of this huge, long-standing um, trade they had in in making things of metal, mm -hmm. and then wood sculpture as well. And, and so I wouldn't pick one group. There was a main group, which still probably dominates West, uh, West African and actually Nigerian art, and that is the Yoruba. Okay. Um, and I sort of honed in on some of their traditions, mm. their ideas of beauty and their ideas of uh, birth and things like that. So mm -hmm. I, and <laughs> that's what kind of attracted me in their sense of color. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness, just really amazing. And the animation of art, because art is not static in Africa mm -hmm. the way it is and perhaps I, here. <laughs> I can see how that would be nice for you because you did want to put that energy into your yeah. pieces with the weaving. Yeah, because so everything together. moves, mm -hmm. right? Although I end up doing essentially a painting and that's, you might say, a poor kind of uh, interpretation of the, all that excitement and animation I think you do get. it though. I think you get well, it. Well, I try. <laughs> I think you do, for sure. I try. Yeah. So, yeah, they're yeah I was really taken beautiful. by it, mm -hmm. I, you know, and I've, I've written articles. I mean, I've written, you know, sort of texts on some of the arts mm -hmm. as well, and yet it's more fun for me to do something interpretive myself mm -hmm. as an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And what is your discipline when you're creating these pieces? Do you have to get up at a certain time or do you, you know, oh, like wow, a certain Ebony. setting? <laughs> <laughs> am I disciplined or am I not? Some um, of us aren't. It's okay. Uh, I guess I'm a morning person, but I'm not terrifically disciplined. Okay. Uh, when, inspi and when inspiration comes, yes. that's when you're yeah. getting to work. Yes. And there are terrible temptations if you become retired because mm -hmm. all of a sudden 
you don't have that small slot of time that you need to use or else mm -hmm. you have a lot of time mm -hmm. and so sometimes you become a little distracted I've tried to keep on the straight and narrow and by belonging to for example uh, in Texas where we live most of the year belonging to the art associations there. Mm -hmm. It keeps me honest because there are some fabulous artists and you know what it takes mm -hmm. to produce something of their quality. So mm -hmm. it gets you going and I find the hours Yeah, and I have no excuses. So what are you doing with those other hours that you're not painting? Oh, or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love physical activity mm -hmm. so I'm um, hiking, uh, I do bike, mm, okay. and um, when I'm back in Texas, I do a lot of swimming. So, and then I spend time with my husband here and there. That's a good thing to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we have two wonderful sons who now have young families, mm -hmm. and they are far away. So, something like that takes a little effort. It might mm -hmm. be a, take a bite out of a. a a week to spend time with them, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Yeah. So I do you're a little active. volunteer. You're busy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you're a busy lady. I'm busy. I'm busy. Yeah. And so you're in Texas and you're in Michigan. Yes. So do you see a big difference between the art worlds in these two places? I do at one level. I think in an ironic way, I'm more comfortable here mm -hmm. because I love the landscape. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're just surrounded by beauty in a place like Charlevoix. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible. Yes. And when we lived in upstate New York, it was the same. So I think that was an easy sort of uh, segue. Yeah. Um, Texas is totally different. Mm. Um, there are really fine watercolorists, as I say, first class. I mean, mm -hmm. awesome people that you can learn from because mm -hmm. although I myself have given workshops, I am a learner and there are many things I can't do. Mm -hmm. uh, the taste level in Texas is different than the North Everything's got to be big, right? Is that what I've heard? Big and <laughs> very abstract in terms oh, okay. of the art world. I've been in a gallery there locally, although I voluntarily kind of withdrew some of my stuff after a while mm. um, because I didn't feel comfortable with um, what was around me okay. and frankly I think where we live art is destined for corporate headquarters I see. and that's wonderful but huge mm -hmm. pieces mm -hmm. wall fillers mm -hmm. and I had to discover that I am not one of those. Mm -hmm. I really like working with nature mm -hmm. or with my imagination at a certain scale, but I'm not thinking whammo, big abstract. Right. Yeah. So for your, your African pieces, is that more from your imagination? Yes. Whereas your um, watercolor weaving tends yes. to be more of a visual that you're working with? Exactly. Okay. Thank you. You're yeah. right. That's interesting. So what's uh, what's the difference within your process there? Is the creative aspect more met, like a meditation or how do you how is it for you to to paint a landscape as opposed for you to do the um, the African work? Yeah. Well, Eb Ebony, that's a really good hard question. <laughs> okay. It is. It's wonderful. I I I would say that maybe you've hit it already. The landscape is something I can resonate with right away mm -hmm. and figure out and color. I love color. Mm -hmm. So I tend to work with color and composition as within that and it kind of works for me. Now it may be because I have a track record and I've been doing that for 30 odd years mm -hmm. um, that it comes more easily. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the African material, I think because I was so steeped in the philosophy behind art, mm -hmm. and secondly, I was humbled by the craftspeople I knew. You know, I feel like a little person compared to a lot of the African sculptors and things like that, mm -hmm. who work under, or did work under very difficult circumstances. Mm. Um, so, that I really mull and mull, and it might take me months mm -hmm. to figure out what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. I, I, does that answer your Ab question? Absolutely. Yeah, it's more difficult is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. It's much more well, difficult. Well, it, it sounds like you're giving a lot of um, thought and um, you want to make sure that you are doing it justice because you, you. <laughs> you want to represent your impression of this culture in a particular way. And so I think it's really good that you're giving it the time and the effort and the energy that you are, for sure. But you can see it within the pieces. They're beautiful. They're Aww. absolutely beautiful. Oh, I well, love thank them you. Thank so you. much. <laughs> um, but so you're active. You're a painter. You do all these things. Is there anything you haven't done yet that you would oh. like to do? Well, there, there are two things. One I really want to do, which maybe will come forth in 2024. I lived in South America before I ever went to Africa. And I was taken by the um, architecture of, let's say, the Andes. The mm -hmm. Inca. I lived in Bolivia, which is in the Andes. Okay. And I have, I'm, I taught that whole world as well as a secondary um, kind of area of specialty mm. when I taught. Yeah, I did Latin American, ancient Latin, Latin American art. Wow. So, so the Inca and their predecessors, because it turns out the Inca are all we know, but there are all these other people who probably built the things that the Incas take credit for in some ways. Mm -hmm. Their architecture, I am working up, a, I want to do something in black and white. It might be quasi-abstract, I'm not sure, okay. based on their extraordinary architecture. Mm. And I've spent enough time in the Andes to appreciate it, and now they found newer ruins with incredible water systems, and they're all in the mountains, so they're mm -hmm. just almost impossible. You wonder how they built them in the first place. Mm. So I, I'm thinking of doing something with that. It'll be kind of geometric, great. and I sort of thought to myself, I work so much in color, I really want to do something with black, white, and grays. Mm. And so that's that's sort of a concrete thing. I carry around my little notebook, it's here. I haven't done a thing with it, but I keep looking at it, and mm -hmm. I'll go back to Texas, and I, maybe I'll work it out. And that's just for me. I mean, mm. there's no... Well, I'd like to see it. Well, Maybe it's for you and me. Oh, okay. All <laughs> I right. I would love All to right. see that. Okay. Yeah. What a, as a matter of fact, you might, you might give me a little bit of an incentive to get going, because I have been thinking about this for a couple of years. Well, I love that idea. Yeah. And then the only other thing is I do occasionally do um, portraits. Mm. I... I think I'm a shy person, basically. Okay. I was wondering why I don't do more people. I do mm. do people, but it's not its not like I love to go and paint a tree before I'll paint a person. Mm. What's wrong with me? <laughs> anyway, so um, I do have, I have some wonderful, I have two wonderful grandchildren. Mm. I've painted my granddaughter, who's now eight, several times. And now we have a little six-month-old uh, grandson. And I'm thinking I should do more of my family. Mm. So it, it's partly I ought to, mm. but I think I would. It would be a labor of love. Sure. So those are all that I have right at the moment. Those are passed down items. Those are things that I you know thought, the, yeah. the family can just carry. And I'm I'm just imagining you painting a face and then weaving it, and it sort of being this Picasso esque, oh. you know, sort of. You've got thing, it. You, know, you know that's what happens. Although yeah. that can be scary for people. <laughs> Sometimes they don't like it. The wouldn't scare me. It would oh, okay. That, that could be for you. And All, right. Well, then, All right. All right. <laughs> I would love to You're see next, that. You're next, Debbie. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Um, so, what would you tell up and coming artists? What advice would you give them? Oh, wow. Um, to honor your your urge to make art. Yeah. Honor it, and don't don't feel don't be. Be, feel it's lesser in this very materialistic world that we live in. Mm. Um, secondarily, I'd say you have to find a way to have a living too, mm -hmm. which is extremely important. Mm -hmm. But as far as the more philosophical idea, I would definitely say, you know, just go and play, mm -hmm. play with things and see what happens. I'm amazed what young people are doing these days. Yeah, That's that what's amazing. so exciting to me. Mm -hmm. So I can just hope that that continues on. And mm -hmm. it kind of is an earmark of our civilization. Mm -hmm. Americans, we tend to um, sort of, I think, over-criticize our, our, our civilization, mm. the way we are. We're not fair enough. We're mm. not 
you know, you could go right down the list. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's wrong with us. But one of the amazing differences living in other parts of the world is the fact that at least as far as my experience and what I see um, with my sons particularly, they were let do what they could do best and find out what that was mm -hmm. and that freedom mm -hmm. that really is important for artists is available here. And you don't necessarily find that in other places. Mm. I'm sorry to say, at least my experience. Right. Well, it sounds like travel inspired you creatively. However, yes. oh, going absolutely. to other places and seeing other cultures, yeah. it seems like that was really inspiring for you. I think it must be for everybody. Exactly. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a good point of advice yeah. too. Worked for you beautifully. So it, was, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. might work for other people too. But Nancy, this was a pleasure. You're a lovely, lovely person and a wonderful artist. I oh, really you. <laughs> love your work. And I'm so glad you could join us today to do this interview. And if anybody has more questions for Nancy, you can check out the description box down below and get more information there. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks again for watching Charlevoix Circle of Arts Creators Corner. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell down below to be notified of our next video premiere. These are two easy ways to show Michigan artists just how much we appreciate their contribution to our beautiful state.